to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And today, you've seen it all, seen it on the TV, is the 75th anniversary of D-Day, a day which changed history. And we are so, so blessed to have with us today Arthur Hubbard and Jack Swimer. <laughs> Unfortunately, Al, his daughter called me yesterday and she's, he's having some medical issues, so unfortunately he couldn't, uh, couldn't join us, but we'll mention a little bit about what he did. 75 years ago. So welcome to Scuttlebutt. Uh, we do this uh, same time, uh, first Thursday of every month, same time, same place. Um, we usually have about 25 veterans uh, that come out and enjoy each other's camaraderie. Uh, the camaraderie of having served in the military is something special. Uh, and the chocolate chip cookies. And the chocolate, I make chocolate chip cookies for our every, every uh, every month too, but it's special, people come in, it's a chance to tell some sea stories and then just rub elbows with people they have something in common with. So, any veterans who have not been here before to Scuttlebutt? So can you just introduce yourself, let me know where you serve? Hello, I'm Jill Mayberry, I served in the Air Force from 1976 to 1981. I was stationed at San Bernardino, California, North <coughs> and Aviano Air Force Base in Italy. I was in for five years. All right. Thank you. Everett Blodgett, I served in the United States Air Force, 1969 1970, in San Antonio. Thank right. you. Right. I see some other new faces here. Harry Holmes. Um, United States Navy from 1966 to 1970. Uh, served a year in Kodiak, but that's about here. Three years in the corner. All right. Thank you. Lloyd? I thought you were going to do that. Lloyd <laughs> Kramer, Marines, 65 to 70, Vietnam. Yes, Bob Ferrari, uh, U.S. Army, 101st Airborne, 1969 71, Vietnam. Vietnam, thank you. <laughs> Francisco? Oh, thank you. Francisco Urena. Oh, I have the privilege and honor of serving currently as the Secretary of Veterans Services, but my time in the Marines, eight years active duty. I served at two American embassies in Syria and in Kyrgyzstan, and I served in a tank unit where, as I commanded a tank, uh, a tank in Iraq in 2005. Thank you. Okay, I would like to welcome our other special guest, Senator Jason Lewis, Representative Mitch Haggerty. Town manager and assistant town manager, uh, Bob Lalasher and Jean Delios. <laughs> so why do we call it the Scuttlebutt? Back in the, the day, uh, on the sailing ship, uh, they took a cast, put a hole in it, which means scuttle the butt, and that's where people went to get water, and that's where people told stories. So we continue that today, where we get together and we tell stories. Before we honor these two gentlemen today, I'd like to honor Roy Sherrod, who was a, a 1942 graduate of Reading Memorial High School, lived at 13 Washington Street, and he enlisted in the Army December 12, 1942. Uh, he was a paratrooper and assigned to the 502nd 
parachute infantry, you would want to infer airborne, the screaming eagles. Unfortunately, unfortunately, Rory was killed in action 75 years ago today. Uh, a town, former town resident, uh, was heading over to Normandy for a trip, and he asked me if I knew of anyone from Reading that was buried over in the Normandy cemeteries. So I went to the high school, took a picture of all the World War II veterans, crossed it to the website of people that are buried in the, the cemeteries in Normandy. And he went over, uh, visited the grave, and took pictures, and came back and, and gave me a whole bunch of information about his service. So today we remember his, his ultimate sacrifice for that day. And now, <laughs> you know, I heard the other day that they just did a re-release of uh, Saving Private Ryan. And at least for me, that opening scene couldn't end quick enough. It just kept going and going and going. And for these gentlemen here, that day didn't end. So Ar Arthur Harvard was a T5, a T5 machine gun gunner with the 110th AAA Gun Battalion, Battery B. And Arthur didn't land on, o on Omaha Beach just once. Uh, he had to go in twice. Uh, being a, a lowly corporal, his, his lieutenant went in earlier to scope out their landing position. Uh, he didn't report back. So Arthur was one of four people selected did you volunteer, Arthur? Uh, oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> he went in, uh, didn't find the lieutenant, ended up going back to his LST, uh, had something to eat, and went back to the beach with the rest of the unit on his rhino. Uh, for the next 15 months, we'll let Arthur tell you a little bit more about it, uh, but the story is right in here. In any, other people in Scuttlebutt who want to read this book. Uh, it's absolutely amazing uh, the things that these gentlemen went through. All the way from Normandy to Ardennes, Battle of the Bulge, and on their way to liberated Paris, and all the way on his way to Berlin uh, when the, the war finally ended. So, uh, just amazing. Unfortunately, couldn't make it today. Uh, he's on the mailing list for a scuttlebutt, and he called me and said, "Well, I wasn't really at D-Day, but it was D-Day plus two. No. Does that count?" I said, no. <laughs> "Absolutely." Uh, unfortunately, he has some medical issues, uh, but he was a Navy signalman, and he was part of a Navy gun crew on a, a Liberty ship, and the Liberty ships were the the workhorses of the basically getting munitions and everything over. They built about 2,700 of them uh, for the war. And if you had $2 million, you could get your name uh, put on one. That's basically what they cost back in, uh, back in 1944. But he was, he was off the coast of, of Omaha Beach, uh, D-Day plus two and three, basically offloading munitions using the ducks. The ducks are what we see running around Boston. Uh, that's what they were running, munitions onto the beach with. But his comment to me was, I was a small part of it, but we still felt like we were part of it, and we were proud. So, unfortunately, he can't be with us today, but I'll go up uh, next week, I'll show him this video, and we'll present him with the, uh, the certificates and the other awards. Eighteen-year-old guy. Uh, 
Jack Swimer. Good looking guy. <laughs> Looks like trouble. <laughs> but uh, again, he was a motor machinist mate responsible for maintaining the diesel engine on a, an Atlantic craft tank, uh, an LCT. And he told me it was part of the second wave where he had delivered two tanks and the chaplain's jeep. Uh, unfortunately, the chaplain uh, was killed in action, uh, jumping with the paratroopers. And after delivering the equipment, Jack was busy delivering endless amounts of troops back and forth uh, from the ships to the beach. And Jack's battle position, uh, he says he was a lucky one. He was the guy who got to lower and, and raise the front ramp. Uh, but just absolutely made. So. I have a little video which I saw yesterday. Expeditionary Force. You are about to embark upon the great crusade toward which we have striven these many months. The eyes of the world are upon you. The hopes and prayers of liberty-loving people everywhere march with you. In company with our brave allies and brothers in arms on other fronts, you will bring about the destruction of the German war machine, the elimination of Nazi tyranny over the oppressed peoples of Europe, and security for ourselves in a free world. 
your task will not be an easy one. Your enemy is well trained, well equipped, and battle hardened. He will fight savagely. The tide has turned. The free men of the world are marching together to victory. I have full confidence in your courage, devotion to duty, and skill in battle. We will accept nothing less than full victory. Good luck. And let us all beseech the blessing of Almighty God upon this great and noble undertaking. Thank you, gentlemen. Now I'd like to ask if you'd like to share a few words, a story, a memory from the day. Come on up. Solutions for uh, we're sort of treating the students out there, and, and in book camp we're, we're treating pretty much okay. so we got to <coughs> and figures training and uh, in Jason Lincoln's book there was a lot of uh, assignments that right? A is going down, B is going through, so you could even start with A, B, or C. And the rest of you, I was at the end of the alphabet, that many farmers. And so then the rest of you are in amphibious. Oh, yeah. So, uh, what's amphibious? No <laughs> one really knew what amphibious was, so, but we find out. So, uh, so I went down to uh, Solomon Islands in Virginia uh, to train. <coughs> And uh, we got down there and loaded up a bus. All there was was mud. <laughs> and the thing in the Navy was just nice and clean all the time. I think that was that. We were walking in mud. It rained the night before, so it was a road that was unpaved. And so uh, we went down there for uh, a train. And uh, so I found out what the LCT was. We ran for a tank and held three tanks. And uh, so we did a training down there with the Army. So after all, I thought they were doing the Army. They were doing the Army. All they did was work with the Army. Okay, and so, I would have been by there. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, so anyway, uh, um, going overseas on a on liberty ship, they just kind of a troop.
they loaded on was, uh, I think it was three tanks, and uh, two or three tanks, I think it was. And we had the Japanese, Chapman's Jeep in front. So he was in front of the first one to get out get the beach. So I went out again on, on the morning of June 6th, and I got there about a day break, about 7 o'clock in the morning, I think it was. And, uh, and we went in, and uh, we, uh, we hit the beach. And my job was to lower the ramp. So uh, I'm going to lower the ramp, and I lower the ramp. And the jeep went out, and it was unfortunate. We had to get a sandbar and didn't know it. We were supposed to know the sandbar to work, but the sandbar shipped. So we couldn't bother to climb or raise the ramp. What about the jeep? Well, that's his life. So uh, we raised the ramp, get up, and went out because we had been loaded with, I think, two or three tanks, and the armored infantry was coming through the tanks. And so uh, then we went out and we hit the beach again. And uh, of course, this is all at low tide because they had obstructions in there. So it went in the high tide. The obstruction to the bottom of the ship down. So we unloaded troops in the tanks. Uh, the tide is very, uh, a very long tides out there in France, that part of France. Uh, so uh, the troops had an awful long way from there. So uh, went out there and found the spot and blow the ramp. And uh, uh, so then the tanks went off with the armored infantry. Uh, I got to talk to some of the guys in the army infantry while we were going to hang up for And uh, they had been in Salerno and so forth. So they were hiding that. And so uh, they were nervous. There was no time for them. There was no time for them. And so uh, we hit the beach, finally. Tanks went off. And uh, troops went off. Uh, they opened up the machine gun fire. Some of the troops, they got the most of the work they They were, as soon as they got off, they got hit. And uh, so one of the members of our crew was going to help them grab them and bring them back on the ship again. And Gibbs said, You can't do that. And I was just looking at the point where he said, I don't give no troops back. Now I'll take a plan to hospital ship. So it's not a hospital ship somewhere. I really don't know what happened after that. But we couldn't waste too much time to keep that. So I'd go with the wind. So we're not going to ride anywhere to the temple. And, uh, and there's some that the troops would ride into that green. You know, they had time to in, uh, in, uh, in combat. spent the day going back and forth on the hunger steps. So I got the transport, came to the soldiers and brought them all. So uh, uh, we went to fire uh, and uh, by the end of the day we went to the fire. But we weren't getting shots uh, of the 88s.
I know those trial fighters there before. It was that tremendous. Uh, the uh, trip to the boat, uh, we went through the moors. During that visit, or that trip, we lost one of our guns, which is a company of the story. Uh, get down onto the LSTs, and I boarded the LST 510 at, uh, on June 1st, so we stayed on that. The same as Jack, uh, we did move out the night of the 4th, because at that time, the invasion was supposed to be on the 5th, and it was such a rough sea, even with the LSTs, you can understand that LST has a rounded bottom. So those boats were really, really, all over the, the ocean. Uh, they sent us back. I landed from, or I boarded in Bristol uh, Harbor. In fact, lined up the ships exactly as you were the day before, mainly so that German uh, photo planes would come over and that everything had to be the same. <coughs> we went out again on the fifth. We stayed off the beach and as Jack was saying, the ocean, the harbor, were just loaded with boats. There must have been 5,000. And from every direction, you would see uh, a boat. Same thing with the sky. The planes, the bombs were coming over, just constantly coming all day, and they would make the trip go back, reload, and come back. So the noise, as Jack said, was. Uh, uh, I didn't actually get on the beach. I'm not sure exact time. I would assume it was probably around the noon time or so. And Basic assault uh, was pretty much over. We were under sniper fire, uh, occasional uh, shell or something. But I was selected uh, volunteer, should I say, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, myself and four of the guys had to go in, and we were looking for our, our scout. Happened to go in with the uh, uh, second wave. In fact, our ship at the time had our whole group, which were 160 of us, and all our equipment. And we had four, uh, two units of the 29th infantry. And those guys offloaded onto uh, a haven or a soft boat, probably three or four. They found out that the uh, 90% were uh, being in the second wave. Uh, we went to uh, find our scout. Again, couldn't do it. Uh, with the bodies and such, it was hard to identify just about anybody. But we did find out later on that uh, he had also survived. Back to our open place. Uh, the, uh, the other uh, assignment we had was to find, or at least to get to our position where we were supposed to be bivouacking, uh, and again, couldn't find it. So we had to go back to the ship. When we get back to the ship, then we loaded off onto a rhino, which is just one large uh, raft. You know, mm -hmm. it had nothing but the boat or the raft were driven by two motors, one on either side. And we were sliding toward the beach, and one of our uh, motors conked out, so had we just kept going. Once we 
got to the beach, offloaded. In fact, when I offloaded, uh, I was sitting in the truck, driving the truck, and I was sitting in the water, probably until my tires, even when we got on that was the rhinos being so high, you couldn't get that close to, to the beach. <coughs> and where we had drifted, a battery, which was also our intent, came in beside us, and the first truck on the pit up. Had we landed in that stuff, it would have happened to us. Uh, three or four of those pilots were just gone. Two of them all in flames because of the trucks that we had. <coughs> we had extra gas tanks five gallon tanks on each fender and the, on the uh, uh, landmine went off and the gas went off. So we just jumped into the, uh, into the water and I was about to get the truth. So from there, uh, we, lot, we, we pulled into the beach then we had to go up almost by point to arc, and we set up our guns and we were firing for two or three groups. From there, I just went on to uh, uh, the liberation of Paris, where we, in fact, I was in the original convoy into Paris from the liberation of Spain, and from there on, when Guns into the Battle of Bulls. Uh, at Bermagan, where they had the, where they commandeered the Lugnot Bridge at that time, so, uh, so they could get tanks and things over. We were on our way to Cologne, which is probably 60 miles out, plus she was heading out. But we heard that they had captured the bridge, then we had to be ready to go back. So after, once we there at Vermeiden, my gun being gun four was the last gun in the convoy, so we were the first gun with the rhino on the rhino river here, and we were shooting over. Uh, I was sitting in my gun at the time when the Lugna bridge collapsed. So from there on, went into Germany. I went to Stuttgart. At Stuttgart, we were told the war was over. I thought that was me. So here I am.
We just had a rich uncle that sent us over for a couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> And thank you to uh, all of our veterans uh, for working with us. And thank you to Evan um, for uh, the great job you do as a veteran. I want to give a shout out. It's, it's a real privilege to have our uh, uh, Secretary of Veterans Affairs, uh, Francisco Arrhenia, with us today and the decorated veteran. Thank you. Thank you. Services, my boss, Francisco Ure. Oh, I appreciate it. Thank you. No, listen, Kevin needs no good work because of his deeds, uh, which here happen in Reading each and every day. Uh, the, the great testimony. Uh, and first, let me thank all of the veterans who are here, whether you were part of those in D Day or you just happened. Uh, to be in different parts of theater of World War II. Show of hands, how many World War II veterans we have among us? How many Korean War veterans we have among us? Vietnam, peacetime in between, Gulf War, Iraq and Afghanistan. So to all of you and to your, vet, to your veteran families who are here, I want to give you all a great round of applause and thank you for the <laughs> have among us, some 350,000, their families, their caregivers, but our veterans agents, a veterans veteran in every city and town, and Kevin Bowmiller, what a true uh, patriot he is, day in and day out, doing events such as these types of scuttlebutts, uh, putting a focus on preserving some of these stories and sharing them among us, bringing a sense of camaraderie, but also remembering some of the sadder times that Reddy has had when the Bars family welcomed home their loved one who did not make it and who 
came home some 73 years later from Korea? 65. 65 years later from Korea. Thank you, Mr. Bars, for, for that sense of community that we were able to share with you and with your family. Uh, you know, to our D-Day survivors who are here, what a, a special day it is to listen to your stories firsthand. You know, it has been mentioned, we are so very grateful but to listen and to thank them personally, I, I don't think sets enough justice. It was honestly their sense of connection, their sense of heroism, but also the men who were left behind, who in shoulders we stand upon today. Our country's freedom, the sense of democracy that we have and that we shared and the opportunities. Again, are thankful to these gentlemen, to their generations, and again, to those who did not have the opportunity to make it. Thank you very much for the lives well lived that you continue to have, where you came back and rebuilt America to the America that we all share today. And on behalf of our Governor Charlie Baker and Lieutenant Governor Polito, I thank you all for this sense of community that you all continue to preserve for all of us. I also want to recognize Lucy Magne, a veteran service officer in the town of Wilmington, who is another dedicated patriot. have since perhaps passed, share their stories. Do not keep those memories uh, with you because it is up to all of us to ensure that the stories do not get rewritten in a future, that they remain and they remain as vibrant as when we hear from these two heroes among us. Thank you so very much. And on behalf of our Department of Veteran Services, I do have uh, my department coin that I'd like to present to both of you all today is a challenge coin, and I know the history of challenge coins you all know very well dates back to World War II, uh, when then again we had uh, Americans uh, in the front lines uh, liberating France on the very first time. So, gentlemen, thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. May God you. bless you all. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Let's give them all the great round. Too much, I'll tear up because I had a great aunt that was involved in uh, some of this, and the stories I heard afterwards as a nurse um, were just unbelievable. This, the singular acts of heroism um, was not confined to those that were in the military portion. It's just a phenomenal thing. So thank you all. Again, thank you everyone for attending today. 
We are blessed to be in the presence of these individuals. Thank you. And we'll go back and have some cake. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.